Welcome to this training video for the new 3M AdFlow powered air respirator. Featuring the new lightweight lithium ion battery. This video will show you how to set up your AdFlow, maintain it, help you get the most out of your equipment and ensure it lasts a long time. The first thing you need to do when you get your kit is charge up the battery. The batteries don't take long to charge from empty. And if you're in a rush, the lithium ion batteries can be quick charged to 80%. Charging to 80% battery life or less has no negative effect on the overall battery life. To fit the battery, locate the end of the battery into the AdFlow unit and then click shut. The next thing you need to do is fit the belt. Make sure it is the right way up as shown by the arrow. Then ensure that the Velcro is done up tightly so the AdFlow is secure and doesn't bounce around when you move. The breathing tube slips in with one twist and clicks into your welding helmet using the quick release system. It's really important to check that your AdFlow is in good working order every time you use it. Firstly, you need to check there is adequate airflow. The airflow indicator tube comes with the AdFlow and can be placed into the top of the breathing tube. Press the on button once to turn on the AdFlow. Make sure that the airflow is sufficient to raise the ball above the line on the indicator. Do not use the AdFlow if the minimum airflow is not met. The AdFlow powered air respirator is fitted with a low flow alarm which is designed to warn you should the airflow drop below the minimum design flow rate. To test this, block the breathing tube with your hand. You will hear the motor work harder to try and deliver the correct airflow. When the AdFlow can no longer deliver the flow, all the lights on the particle clogging indicator and the red light on the on off panel will be illuminated. You will also hear a high pitched alarm. If this situation were to occur during normal use, you should leave the hazardous area immediately. Next, check that your filters are fitted correctly. Then, check the condition of the breathing tube. If it is cracked or damaged in any way, or there is dirt on the inside of the tube, replace it immediately. Finally, with the AdFlow switched on, you can use the battery indicator to check the battery life. When the last bar of the indicator flashes and an audible alarm sounds, you only have 5% of the battery life remaining. If this occurs, do not carry on using the AdFlow until the battery is charged. The AdFlow has two airflow settings. Push the on button once to start the airflow. The first green light will show on the on-off panel. This setting delivers approximately 170 litres of air per minute. For increased comfort, you can increase the airflow to approximately 200 litres per minute. This is done by pressing the on button a second time. When in the boost mode, there will be two green lights on the on-off panel. To reduce to normal airflow, you simply push the button again for the third time and one of the green lights will go out. Press and hold the off button to turn it off. Your AdFlow Turbo comes with a particle filter, a pre-filter to prolong the life of the main filter and a spark arrestor fitted. Remove the filter cover from your AdFlow by pressing the latch and lifting the cover off. The first item is the particle filter, followed by the sacrificial pre-filter which will need to be checked and removed more often than the main filter and then the spark arrestor. When putting the filters and spark arrestor back together, load them up into the outer cover and then connect to the turbo unit. Snap the outer cover back into place. An audible click confirms it is located properly. Do not load the filters onto the turbo and then add the outer cover. Doing it in this way it could mean the filters and spark arrestor are not correctly aligned. Many welders find the smell of welding fumes unpleasant and prefer to use odour filters as well as particulate filters. These are available separately and are fitted underneath the particulate filter. Gas and vapour filters are also available if required. Filter clogging affects battery life, but you can calculate the expected battery life based on the condition of your filters. This graph is supplied in the user instructions. Compare the number of lights on your filter clogging indicator with the curve of the graph. If you are using the standard battery, you will need to read off the left hand side of the graph. And if you are using the heavy duty battery, you will need to read off the right hand side of the graph. 
It is best practice to change your filters when one red light is illuminated. Replacing your pre-filter regularly will prolong the life of your main filter. Always replace filters with new filters. Don't try and clean old ones, bang them out or blow them out with compressed air. This can damage the filters and prevent them from giving you the right level of protection. All you need to do for your monthly maintenance records is carry out your before use checks and keep a note of anything you find or replace. Periodically you may also need to clean the spark arrestor as this can become clogged. The HSC require that monthly maintenance records are kept and 3M are able to provide templates as well as care and maintenance packs to help you do this. These can be found on the internet at 3m.co.uk forward slash maintenance pack. Thanks for watching our 3M training video. We hope that you found it useful. For more information, please visit our website 3m.co.uk forward slash speedglass.